Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Get Sunday morning to you all. I hope everyone's doing awesome out there this morning and having a fantastic start to your day and a great weekend out there so far. Here to bring you the latest on what's going to happen weather-wise for your day. The big topic is going to be severe weather. We have an enhanced risk across the middle of the country. But man, we have a huge slight risk stretching from basically Canada all the way down to Texas that we need to speak on. And we're going to get very detailed on these individual areas that I do think run a higher risk of severe weather. Significant winds and significant hail is the big topic with this severe weather threat for today. But there is a 5% risk of a tornado for an individual area also. So we'll speak on that. In great detail, we'll talk about the rest of the country. A lot of scattered moisture across the eastern U.S. It's going to keep you guys pretty damp and cloudy across a pretty large area across the eastern U.S. System moving into the Pacific Northwest we'll speak on also. And after we get done doing all that, we'll give you an update on the severe weather days to come and just a, a pattern that I'm watching. And, um, and then we'll give you some brief information on the tropics. For you folks that really just tune in during hurricane season, and I got people who just tune in during winter season also, and I get it, you know, there's certain seasons that interest you more than others. And I'm the same way. I think I mentioned many times, uh, so talking severe weather is my, uh, out of the big three, winter weather, tropics, severe, I would say severe is number three on the list. Winter's number one, tropics right in the middle. So I definitely get it. But of course, I can't just stop talking about certain types of weather because I don't like talking about it as much. Uh, but certainly I understand as a viewer, you only tune in during certain times. But for you people who like to hear about the tropics and like my updates specifically, I am going to start to speak on it a lot more. Not only just because of you guys are the viewer, and trust me, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not talking for you guys, but, but for me also, it helps me kind of freshen up speaking on the tropics. It's kind of like when you transition from winter to severe weather season, you kind of got to get used to talking about severe weather again. And it's the same thing when you're transitioning from severe weather to the tropics. So uh, I'm going to start speaking on it a lot more over the next few weeks until eventually, inevitably, we do have a storm to speak on and track. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And more importantly, if anybody has anything to pray that I can pray about or someone else could pray about or all of us can pray about, obviously, please put those in the comments below so we can do that. So. Whew, let's get rocking and rolling. So look at all this action going on in the middle of the country. And I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, you know, the radar's not going to look much different later on this evening. I mean, we already have clusters of storms cruising across the middle of the country. A little bit of light flow in the mid-levels of the atmosphere out there. Uh, definitely enough moisture surging all the way up to the Dakotas. Um, I mean, you have those overlapping of the kinematics and the thermodynamics, and you run the risk of strong and severe storms. And that will continue to be the theme. Over the next 24 hours, and we're already getting it this morning, some severe thunderstorms in the panhandle of Texas, clusters of storms at Kansas, clusters of storms in different sections of Nebraska and Kansas, the Dakotas, uh, and we even got this cluster of rain and storms moving out of eastern Montana. Now, you got a lot of slow-moving downpour action across the eastern U.S. Nothing really in the form of storms. Of course, there's probably some flashes of lightning, rumbles of thunder out there. But um, just more so just, just kind of widespread rains. For example, my location hasn't seen rain in about almost two weeks now. And it uh, looks like we got some rain moving in now. So I'm very happy about that. Even if it does put a little bit of a damper on a Sunday morning, you know, we definitely need the rain. More rain falling this morning in Louisiana. Rain moving into southern Ontario, which pretty much already has. And a little bit of spin continues with this um, area of low pressure out here in the Atlantic Canada region. And we got a lot of rain starting to move into the Pacific Northwest coastline. This will bring washout conditions over the next 24 to 48 hours up here for sure. I mean, I'm talking about a few to as much as several inches of rain could fall. And once again, the Southwest just continues to be quiet. Watches, warnings, and advisories. The heat is coming for the Southwest. It's already going to be pretty hot today. But you got excessive heat watches for this burgundy color here that we haven't seen on the map in a while. Uh, heat advisories in this more orange shaded color here. This is um, excessive. Man, I'm brain farting this. Yeah, no, this is high wind watches. I'm sorry. High wind watches right here. Not quite high wind warnings yet. That turns into more of a mustard color. High wind watches in Montana. Very windy again for you, uh, Karen, up here in Montana. Wind advisories up here. Just a lot of flow going on. But a big system moving into the Pacific Northwest, like I just mentioned. Flood watches are up for those areas because of a lot of rain on the way. And dense fog advisories, uh, you know, right here between two different air masses, very moist to your west, a little bit drier to your east. So that's what's going on right now as far as those advisories, watches, and mornings. Excessive rainfall outlook, multiple areas to watch out for. Nothing 
too crazy it looks like as far as a moderate risk. Once you start to get to that red area, moderate risk or higher, that's when you really need to start to pay attention to the flooding risk. But in the middle of the country, very large area that has a slight risk, at least a 15% chance of flash flood guidance um, being exceeded within 25 miles in a given location. This area, this area, and then areas of the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies here in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. So please be careful of uh, you know mudslides, rock slides, just a lot of rain runoff on some of these highways, especially out in these higher elevations of the Rockies, for sure. And then the Storm Prediction Center, there it is. I mean, check it out. The Mexico-Texas line all the way up to the Canadian-U.S. line. So slight risk, I mean, for this entire yellow area, level two out of five. I mean, this is a pretty large area of the country, right in the heart of the country. And then you have a pretty large enhanced risk that includes a good chunk of uh, Nebraska, uh, northern and northwestern Kansas, and even northeastern Colorado. So uh, let's just take this, continue to look at this broad look at this really quick here. And the tornado outlook, 2% risk in the green stretches, basically from the same areas. It's a little bit more scrawnier, kind of um, smaller in the slight risk area, but pretty large area has a 2% risk of a tornado. Smaller risk has a 5% risk of a tornado. Wind threat, large area in the yellow, 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. The red area, 30% chance of that. And then the black outline region, that's a 10% risk of winds exceeding 75 miles per hour or higher. And then the hail threat, area in the yellow, 15% risk of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. Red area, a 30% chance of that. And then that black outline region, that's a hatch risk, which means there's a 10% risk of hail exceeding two inch in diameter or larger. Could be a wind driven hail event today. All right, so a little bit closer look at the more highlighted area that I think runs, and this obviously everybody does, the Storm Prediction Center, the experts, and even me, just a weather enthusiast, uh, think the same thing. We got the highest risk of severe weather in this orange area. This includes um, Grand Island, North Platte, uh, Imp Imperial, um, uh, O'Neill, Ord, uh, Thedford, I don't think I've ever mentioned that one, all the way down to Colby, Kansas, Goodland, uh, Hill City. So. Level three out of five risk, enhanced risk in the slight risk area. You got Omaha, Lincoln, uh, Manhattan, Hutchinson, Great Bend, Dodge City, Gards, Garden City. I mean, this goes all the way down um, to the south central U.S. and all the way up into the northern states, all the way up to Canada. Also, Sioux City, Spencer, you guys included in, in Iowa. So you do run a risk in the dark green, too. So, I mean, that's like Kansas City. I actually think they'll extend this slight risk a little bit further into Iowa, or the H triple R model is really liking the idea for a cluster of storms to get a little bit further east in Iowa. So, what is this driven off of? Where there's that tornado risk, a little bit of a higher threat here. All right, and this includes like North Platte, uh, Goodling, Colby, Hill City, Kansas, uh, Imperial, um, and just th this brown area. Five percent risk of a tornado, two percent risk in the rest of the green, and then the wind and hail outlook is the thing we're concerned about today. Yellow. I meant red area, 30% chance of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. And this basically includes the heart of Nebraska, sections of northern Kansas. But if you live in this 10% risk area, that means there's a 10% risk of winds exceeding 75 miles per hour or higher. And then the hell outlook, red area, 30% chance of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. Black outline region overlapping certain sections of the red area and yellow area. 10% risk of hail exceeding two inch in diameter or larger. So we go ahead and break this all down. First thing we'll look at is the Northern Plains, North Central US, everybody see on your screen here. So this morning, you already got clusters of rain, shower storms out here. You continue to make your way to about, and remember this is in Eastern time, so back this up according to your time zone out here. So most of this area, back this up an hour, some maybe two. So this is around lunchtime, let's just say. We got clusters of rain up here in North Dakota, uh, northern areas in Minnesota, some storms starting to develop here in Southeast South Dakota. And I think that those storms that I just mentioned in Southeast South Dakota could begin to grow into more intense storms. So you, you know, around two to 3 p.m. this afternoon, you kind of got two main areas to watch for. One up here in North Dakota. Uh, these storms, if you live in this section of North Dakota, could uh, produce all hazards. There's a, a small chance of tornadoes, hail, and wind threat up here. So be aware of these storms here that will eventually cruise into Canada, maybe even affect northwestern sections of Minnesota. And um, 
As we start to get into Iowa with these storms, these look quite intense. And, and this is why I think they'll extend a the slight risk maybe a little bit further east into Iowa, maybe. So at this point, you got three things going on. You still got this cluster of storms up here. Could uh, be some back building of these storms a little bit deeper, further southwest and in southern sections of North Dakota. And then you got this area of storms beginning to develop in western Nebraska that I really think has the opportunity to produce all hazards. You got these uh, storms still ongoing in Iowa, okay? And you kind of keep everything going. And I mean, there, there's multi, like I said, multi things going on right here. These storms up here could produce all hazards. These storms right here really pose a significant wind threat. This is around 7, 8 p.m. I'm telling you, if you live here in central Nebraska, you got to watch out for these storms. These, these could definitely, there, there's a more elevated area, more favored section of mid-level flow in this region, basically better wind flow aloft, favorable wind flow aloft to really push the um, severe wind threat more so in this region for sure. But look at all these storms in Iowa. These look quite intense. Sioux Falls, Sioux Cities region. Um, I know I always kind of combine you guys. I know y'all are you know, pretty far away from each other, but I always just kind of cluster it together there. Um, but Ames getting hit by some nasty storms. These are starting to dip down maybe all the way to Des Moines here around 8 to 9 p.m. here in northern Iowa, central Iowa. Look at this line of storms up here. These could be quite intense. Look at this little bowing structure here in northwestern Minnesota dipping all the way down into southeastern North Dakota, um, a north um, a northeastern uh, South Dakota. A bunch of tongue twisters there. Look at these little individual cells here in eastern South Dakota. You want to watch out for those. And then these might attach somewhere in here. I mean, that's a pretty nasty line of storms getting closer to midnight, starting to move into central Minnesota. A lot of rain could fall in this region. Watch out, Omaha, Lincoln. You guys could get hit by some storms maybe around midnight tonight. It might take deep into the night before these storms reach you guys. And then these could eventually dip all the way into northern sections of Missouri um, in the wee hours of the morning. And then they'll lose some steam as they kind of outrun their favorable environment. But that, there's a lot going on. The models are not going to do fantastic or anything or perfect by any means in this setup, especially with light flow in the atmosphere. Very, very difficult for these short range models to really pick up on this. But, you know, it, it's going to be tough. But, you know, if you kind of zoom into Nebraska, which good chunk of Nebraska has that enhanced risk. And yeah, I can't find Nebraska to save my life. And, and here it is. And let's see if we have a newer run here. Yeah, we do. So let's look at the newer run, see what this looks like for specifically for Nebraska areas of Colorado and even Kansas in this. And it kind of clears out for this afternoon. Not a whole lot going on. And then look at this one cell here. Areas of South Dakota. You want to watch out for that. But then you just want to be mindful of these storms. And I'm telling you, you know, they're, they're showing some individual discrete supercells in Southeast South Dakota. I, knew, I know I keep mentioning that. But I'd watch out for those to produce maybe a more heightened risk of a tornado. But this area of cluster of storms rumbling through Nebraska. This is 9 p.m. This is 10 p.m. Damaging wind threat is is pretty significant with this, okay? I mean, over 75, 80 mile per hour wind gusts are possible with this. So definitely watch out in this more isolated area here in the state of Nebraska for a more significant wind threat for sure. And uh, looking at the updraft of Listy Swath, I think it picks up well on three different areas to watch. One up here in northern Minnesota, the Dakotas, you see here. One here in Iowa and then surrounding states. And then it picks up on this line of storms that kind of moves across the entire state of Nebraska later this afternoon, this evening. Uh, this indicates rotation and stronger updrafts, stronger storms. And uh, we certainly need to watch out for rotation with these storms. So definitely be mindful of that. Uh, but I think, you know, looking at the wind risk with this, and we'll start it off, let's see, when, when is this? We'll start off around 2 to 3 o'clock this afternoon. You know, we're already starting to get some clusters of storms up here, but watch how the, the kind of the, the map gets lit up here, okay? We'll take it all the way. Let's just go on and take it to about Monday morning. You see this area down here in Nebraska? That's the area of concern with the wind threat today. But you see areas in southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, too, with those storms that you want to watch out for probably earlier in the day. I'm not talking about like 11 a.m. I'm talking about like early evening. You want to watch for these storms that try to form. And then you see these little kind of uh, streaks here in eastern North Dakota, areas of Minnesota up here. You want to watch those, too. And I know you're thinking, well, well some people might be. 
Um, you know, why is it this so separated from that? Same thing down here. Why is this so separated from this? This is in one hour intervals. So, you know, it picks up from one hour to one hour. That doesn't mean it just skips over this entire area right here. So just keep that in mind. So, uh, but a little bit closer look at Nebraska with this because I am concerned more so for the Nebraska hail and wind threat. And of course, we're going to have to kind of go back. Let's go back to this. And there it is. This only takes us out to about 11 p.m. So this has not quite made it to the Omaha Lincoln area. But look at this wind threat with these storms. I mean, in that little now the H triple R model does overdo this sometimes, but you know, in these areas right in here, like the little white areas, I mean, that's <clears throat> that's like 80, 85 mile per hour wind gusts, guys. So, I mean, really, if you live anywhere in Nebraska, guys, I would really pay attention to this significant wind threat today. This could be a nasty cluster of storms that sweeps through this area. I mean, there is an outside chance we get a moderate risk just because of winds, I would say. It would be for winds. Remember I mentioned yesterday morning I thought we would get um, just a higher risk to, to, for today. I thought maybe it was more so going to be for North, uh, for South Dakota, but the threat has shifted a little bit better, a little bit more south. So we need to pay attention to this for sure. <clears throat> now, we take a look at our friends a little bit further south. Central and Southern Plains. Now, I know this is a very wide look at this, so it's going to be kind of hard to latch our eyes on to different areas. So we'll try, we'll try to zoom in on certain areas on the fly here. But we'll start off this morning. I can tell you, if we look at the radar, it is doing horrid on picking up what's going on right now. We got all these clusters of uh, clusters of storms, heavy rain, and, and basically Oklahoma, Kansas, and the panhandle of Texas. We got all this going on. And, you know, this is what the model is trying to say is happening right now. It's picking up on this, but, I mean, it's not doing a great job. It's not. So keep that in mind. Um, but, you know, as we start to get into about midday, look at all these storms clustering around Houston points northwest. We got some storms already forming. These could be strong to severe. But then as we start, I think it does have the right idea on what happens later on this afternoon, this evening. I think these models really struggle with this pattern in the morning hours the most. But you take it to, let's say, uh, it's around 6, 7 p.m. Storms here in the eastern half of uh, Texas. Anything that does form could produce all hazards. And you see this entire, see if we can draw on this. You see this entire region right here. That's where storms are going to have an opportunity to form here. And immediately grow up scale, pack a punch, wind threat, hail threat, tornado risk, even though low, it's there. So... Get this back off your screen, if you would please get off my screen. There you go. And uh, we'll keep this going. And look how the storms really intensified around 8, 9 p.m. These look to be some nasty storms in Texas. I mean, but Kansas, I think you'll have a similar setup as Nebraska. And we're going to zoom into all these. I'm just, I'm just kind of taking a broad look. And then all this stuff will quite literally, I mean, just move west to east in general. Flow is very zonal in the middle of the country, meaning west to east, light flow, pushing these storms. And I mean, this is three, 2 o'clock in the morning, and look at these. It almost looks like supercells in northern Texas out here. And then, you know, we're probably waking up to another morning of clusters of storms here in the southern plains. So let's take a closer look at all these people. And I know this is going to make the video much longer, but, you know, I feel like we should do this. Okay. Um, we'll take a look at the latest model guidance that we have. And it's the same thing. Storms form out here in western Kansas. This will include northern sections of Oklahoma also. And then they'll quite, they'll just literally sweep across from west to east the entire state. And the structure of the storm, these storms we're not sure. These could be attached. This could just be a nasty line of storms producing damaging winds and isolated tornado risk and very large hail, wind driven hail. But you know, it shows this more discreet look here around Hayes and just central Kansas. You want to watch out. But, I mean, these aren't going to be, you know, this isn't going to work out exactly. And, in fact, this is as far out as we can go on this. And we'll have to jump back to the 06Z. And, and, honestly, it isn't much different. But you just want to watch for all these. This could be more of a cluster. This is around 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Storms could be knocking on the door doorstep of, like, Kansas City, Topeka, you know, around the wee hours of the morning. Okay, I think it'll by far be the worst in western Kansas, but, you know, that's the entire sweep through. And if you look at the winds with Kansas, this is what it looks like. 
Like I said, it really picks up on western and central Kansas with these storms. 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts are possible, maybe more. Just depends on how intense the storms are. Okay, so go back to this and I want to look at, let's just go down to Texas and Oklahoma. Okay, and back this up this morning. And there's those storms kind of dancing around from, you know, Houston points northwest. And then we could have some isolated strong to severe storms around Dallas Fort Worth area, you know, around eastern Texas, maybe all the way up to the Red River. And these are the storms you want to watch out for. This is around 6, 7 p.m. this afternoon, this evening. And, you know, Amarillo, all down to Lubbock, I mean, almost to Odessa, Odessa. And these storms, Childress, I think it's Childress, Texas, you could get hit hard around 8, 9 p.m. this evening. And so these, these storms, if you live in this section right here of Texas, you know, th these could you know create a lot of ruckus tonight for your dinner and just your winding down for the weekend be aware of these very large hail damaging winds tornado risk and they will continue they're not going to lose much steam as you get later in the evening they will ride into western oklahoma southern oklahoma northern texas i mean this is midnight 1 a.m 2 a.m 3 a.m i mean dallas fort worth area getting hit hard look at these little supercells trying to form in the back end of this we'll have to watch for a boundary and then we're probably waking up for a Monday morning with clusters of storms everywhere. So we'll certainly watch out for that. But these storms can pack a punch for sure, guys. And, you know, you kind of get a, a more zoomed in look at this. And there's that updraft felicity swath for this area uh, showing some stronger updrafts in this region. Um, there will be a tornado risk with some of this low end, but it's there. It's there for sure. And then we look at the wind threat. I'm doing a lot of this on the fly. Seems like it's working out pretty pretty easy but there's that damaging wind risk that the h triple r model is really picking up on from the panhandle of texas through southern oklahoma and northern texas all the way down to like north central texas down here you see these little clusters right in here i mean those are where the storms are uh, the model showing the storms capable of producing 60 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts and i think that's possible you got a significant risk uh, well a threat of significant winds in this area so in certain areas that you're seeing on the map so please be aware of that uh, it's definitely going to be a day that we need to be weather aware across the high plains for sure. And then rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, it just depends on if you get hit by multi rounds of storms, but it really likes the idea of the most rain falling here in the north central U.S., especially from northern Kansas points north into this region. One, maybe as much as two inches of rain is possible, but we could get a lot of rain down here along north Texas, southern Oklahoma region also. So. We'll be, let's be aware of that. Now, you know, what's driving this, this setup for today? It's pretty cut and dry. Moist air, and when honestly, I'm not even going to get this in movement. There's no point. This is frozen for the Euro for this evening. Dew points in the 60s rising all the way up to the U.S.-Canada line. So, I mean, you got a moist air mass. The dew points in the 60s, plenty of moist enough, especially for this area of the country up here. Down here, even better. Dew points in the mid to upper 70s even getting into the 70s and um, into the eastern half of Texas. So plenty of moist air, right? What about that flow to get those storms going? It's light, but there's pockets of more enhanced flow. This is the mid-level flow, 500 millibars, 18,000 feet up in the air. And you notice these lines right in here? You notice how they're just kind of going west to east, but you see how it's buckling? That's, that means you got little impulses of energy in the atmosphere. So you got this more enhanced area down here in Texas. This, this could really fuel those storms we just mentioned in Texas and Oklahoma. But up here, you had the best flow, especially right here in Nebraska. So we got to be aware of this increased lift in the atmosphere and then um, just increased uh, wind threat because of it. So let's be aware of that. Uh, that's the breakdown of the severe weather. Let's talk about the rest of the country. The southeast today, the general theme will just be scattered downpours. I mean, that's literally what it is. Once you get back towards Louisiana, there is a risk of strong to severe storms, a little bit more higher of a risk just of rain in general. But let's hope we can get some of those downpours that the HRRR model is showing for the Tampa region. We need the rain here, but you're definitely going to have some storms down here in the southern half of the peninsula of Florida. Look at all these scattered downpours across the apps. Definitely a cl more cloudy than sunny day across most of this area. Downpours just kind of dancing around back here. I, we don't expect widespread severe weather today at all, but you can't rule out a strong storm. Light flow out here, so these storms literally will pop up and 
uh, just will kind of drift around. They're not going to be pushed really hard because there's lack of flow in the atmosphere. But just scattered downpours. I mean, it's kind of one of those days where you can look at your weather app all day long, uh, but <laughs> you just kind of have to wait and see. And, you know, if you're going out on the water today, the leaning kind of lakes in the southeast, it's going to be a tough day to figure out. You know, you go be fine one minute and then the next minute there's a downpour and then the next minute the sun's back out. Could be kind of one of those days. So just be aware of that tough forecast day for your local meteorologist. That's widespread downpours across pretty much this entire area you just saw. Northeast, a little bit easier to forecast. For the most of the northeast, it's, it's going to be pretty dry. Now you get back here into western PA, western New York State, points south and southwest kind of gets to the same general pattern scatter downpours you see them popping up in ohio west virginia kentucky western va more widespread just light rain this afternoon definitely a rainy sleepy afternoon in buffalo to the finger lakes region eventually getting all the way to the tuck hill plateau southern tier of new york some showers this evening will eventually drift into the i-95 corridor and then I do think uh, we'll have some lingering showers into the overnight hours across the interior northeast, even still all the way back to the I-95 corridor. Waking up to some rain showers, potentially from D.C., I mean, all the way to New York City, maybe all the way up into Connecticut. So we're going to skip over the north central and south central U.S. because we pretty much already broke that down. Typically, I'll show it again, but we're not going to do that this morning. The western U.S., it's quiet this morning, but look over here, a lot of rain entering your screen and it moves in quick this morning and really just takes over for the this basically the remainder of the day and night. Just look at all those dark greens, even some yellow showing up. This will just be a steady, moderate rain across Washington, Oregon. Very, very sleepy Sunday. No doubt about it. Definitely just a dreary Sunday. You know, get home from church, whatever you got going on. And you have every excuse in the world up here to just relax. So, um, That'll be the theme and we get into the evening hours just continuing and then like every system out here, once the kind of congealed rain, widespread rain moves in, we'll have more of a convected feed tomorrow and we'll have to watch for that. But rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, I mean, this is a lot of rain. Of course, you'll get rain shadowed in the valley region, but you know, the, the, the coastal mountains here and then the Cascades. We'll get the lift. They'll get more moisture. And it's just the time of the year where you're not really seeing any snow from this unless you live, you know, over 10,000 feet up in the air, which I don't know how, I don't know how many people live that far up. You guys will have to let me know out West. How many, when, when does that, I'll, I'll be interested in this. Hopefully people are listening out West. Um, when is the, like the house kind of cut off? Like people stop living a certain elevation up. I, I am interested in that. Um, but anyways, definitely a lot of rain in this area. Temperatures, I mean, pretty much widespread warmth. I mean, 70s, even some low 80s into the northeast. You see this pocket of cooler air because of just cloud cover and rain. But I mean, getting warm back, warming back up again here in the southeast, 80s, some low 90s, very hot in, in Florida. And just, I mean, just pretty much warm across the board, guys. I mean, it, it, there's really nobody that's extremely hot or extremely cold by any means now if you're going to cool down the pacific northwest just because of the rain and stuff but the southwest enjoy normal heat today for sure <laughs> because uh, it's going to get quite hot in this area um, over the next few days with the ridge just really going to flex into the western u.s now looking at the storm prediction center moving forward into tomorrow i mean you got a pretty large area that runs the risk of uh of, runs the risk of storms Pretty large area that runs the risk of strong storms also. <clears throat> in the dark green, it's a level one out of five risk. But as of now, tomorrow does not look to look like to, to tomorrow does not look to be a big severe weather day. It really doesn't. We could end up upgrading this somewhere to a slight risk. We'll see what happens. Haven't looked really deeply, haven't looked really deep into tomorrow yet, but certainly a risk of strong to severe storms. Now I am watching Tuesday. I think that we could have more of an increased severe weather threat for Tuesday. What we call an MCS, mesoscale convective system, could affect your weather in the Midwest for Tuesday. I want to watch this. So as of now, they just have a level one out of five risk, a marginal risk. We'll continue to monitor this for sure. Going forward, day four onward, Wednesday, you know, onward here. Predictability too low, but I definitely think we will run risk of strong and severe storms. But of course... That confidence is just low right now on the evolution of the energy 
that will, you know, run the eastern side of this ridge between the ridge and the trough. We talked a lot about that in yesterday morning's video, and I'm going to try to have a video sometime this evening on the pattern coming up for you folks. I did promise you guys a video this weekend, so I'm going to try to get that one in. I actually have a kickball game at my church today, um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but the update on the tropics, guys, you know, nothing. Uh, nothing for the next two days, nothing for the next seven days. And you look at models, I mean, even the crazy GFS that can be wild sometimes with the tropics. It's not really showing anything getting going. So nothing really to discuss for now. Um, but I'm telling you guys, I got this feeling, and I've said this before, that we might have a typical start to hurricane season. I actually made a poll on um, on X, Twitter X, yesterday that says, that basically was, hey, when do you think we'll get our first named storm? Um, is it going to be early June, um, late June, early July, or late July? And late June took the most votes by, by a pretty good long shot. So um, I, I think I agree. I, I like the late June time frame. I, and when I say late June, I mean like the second half of June, June 15th onward. So that's where I'm going for right now. And I'm not talking about a hurricane, just a named tropical storm um, or higher. So we'll watch. I'm not, I don't see anything out there for now, guys. So we'll continue to monitor it. But I am going to get a little bit more detail in the tropics and what I'm seeing for the, for about the first, for the, for the for a few weeks out ahead of us. And if there's anything that I think or a time frame that could form for the foreseeable future. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful Sunday. And I'll talk to you again soon.